When I was 18 years old, I applied for this scholarship that would have paid for all of my tuition and all of my expenses for all four years of any college that I got into. The final round was this interview process in Las Vegas for the entire board of this organization. At the time, I had been training in Russia for a rhythmic gymnastics competition, but I decided to fly back just for that one day to attend this once in a lifetime opportunity for this interview process. And I thought that I had prepared myself extensively well for it. And then the very first question they asked me was, so besides gymnastics and besides school, can you tell us about yourself? And I was like, hmm. <laughs> and then they said, we know you went to the Rio Olympic Games and we know you have decent grades, but like, what else do you have going on in your life? You know, uh, what else do you have to offer to this world? Who are you besides gymnastics? My talk today is to talk about how five years later, I'm still processing that question. It's been two years since I've retired from sports and I'm still realizing what it means to have been an athlete more than I was a person. So far, it's meant that I've realized that I can't make a decision for the life. Case in point. So I recently downloaded this little app to help me make day-to-day -day decisions every day when I need a little push. Um, sometimes I use it to ask the bigger questions in life. And you know, sometimes I just need it to ask what's very normal for a college student to need help asking. This app, by the way, is called Wheel. Subtle plug in case any of you would like to download it for your own usage. Another example is that in preparing for this TED Talk, I actually ended up writing two different speeches. They went in very different directions, but I liked both of them. But I thought, oh, which one should I write? I was weighing the pros and the cons and the cons and the pros. And my friends will tell you, I blast texted them like 10 times asking, what should I do? What should I do? The end result being, I ended up writing another one so I could avoid having to pick in the first place. I'm actually very happy with where I've ended up now because I think this speech is very meta. But at the time, and as you can see, choice paralysis is a very real and very ongoing issue for me. And the question is why? Why is it so hard for me to make decisions beyond the normal amount for a young college student and beyond a Libra such as myself? And the answer to that is I was an elite athlete for 16 years of my life. And for 16 years of my life, I didn't really have to make decisions on what to eat, on when to sleep, on how to live. There were the things that you did to be successful and the things that you did if you were just lazy or not serious. I wore athleisure every single day to school because it made the most practical sense for going to the gym afterwards. I ate meals according to what would give me the most protein. And I always, always slept in the car before going to practice to give myself extra energy. Because you have to understand, as an elite athlete, I was training of upwards about eight hours a day to become a better rhythmic gymnast. And I was becoming a better gymnast so I could go to the Olympics. And I wanted to go to the Olympics because that was my dream. Everything had a through line from the micro to macro scale. My life was routine and it was optimized and I never had to make a decision because I always knew what the right thing to do was. But of course, life now is a little bit more difficult. It's more complicated. And that's not just my GCAL talking. I don't know what I have to do or what I should do every single day. I know that my choices matter now just as much as my actions, but I don't know what exact choices that I should be making. And as much as that's important, I think that the root cause of why I have choice paralysis is a fear of failure. But let's go back. What exactly is rhythmic gymnastics and how did I get here? So rhythmic gymnastics is a sport with four equipment, hoop, ball, clubs, and ribbon. Each gymnast must perform four routines each minute. Each routine is one minute and 30 seconds. And the sport involves throwing, catching, handling the equipment as one moves across the carpet with me. What the sport is not is artistic gymnastics, which is the one with the bar, beam, vault, flips, Simone Biles, you get the point. <laughs> And the names are a little bit misleading because artistic gymnastics is actually more technical and rhythmic gymnastics is more artistic. But the point being, they are two separate sports and I did rhythmic. Here's a video clip of me at the 2019 World Championships doing ball. A 
So that is rhythmic gymnastics. And while the tricks are important, what drew me initially to the sport was the musicality, the artistry, and the presentation. Because as a young child, my very first love was dance. Now, I knew from a very young age that I could not sing. RIP joining a Yale acapella group. <laughs> but I could dance. And so I remember doing hip hop at my local YMCA and taking traditional Chinese dance classes at my Chinese school. Then one day, a fellow six-year-old needed someone to carpool with. She needed someone to drop her off at her gymnastics class after Chinese school. My mom volunteered, I came with, and the rest is history. But the thing to understand about rhythmic is that when I first started doing it, I wasn't thinking about why I was doing it. I just enjoyed doing it, and so I performed naturally, and I was good at it. I was who I was without even having to try. And I mean, as a 12-year-old, I was really keeping. Like, 12 was a really great age for that. But as I got older, life got a little harder. I started making mistakes, and my parents and my coaches started telling me, next time you go out there, just be yourself. As if, when I performed well, that was the real me. And when I didn't, I was some inferior version. That's not necessarily what they meant, but it's how I began to feel. Like, trying my best was the same as doing my best. And doing my best was the same as being the best. And instead of just being who I'd always been, I now had to prove who I still was. In Rhythmic, you become a senior athlete when you turn 15. That's when you're in your prime and things start to get serious. It was also the time when I started high school, and I realized that having a social life was something that people could have. Now, when I was in middle school, even at that young age, I could tell I was not missing out on anything. But in high school is when I started to realize that some things had to be sacrificed in the name of the greater good of gymnastics. And I was okay making that sacrifice. I was okay with doing that. But as I got older, my friends started graduating, I applied for college, and I started to feel different. Which brings us back to the moment of the interview. They asked me, who are you besides gymnastics? And they could see the fear in my eyes. <laughs> so they followed up with, what else matters? And then in that moment, I mumbled something about how I enjoyed playing settlers baton with my family occasionally. Not my proudest moment, and needless to say, I did not get the scholarship. <laughs> but you can understand that I was so taken aback in that moment. First, I knew that I was not getting the money. Secondly, I could not answer that question, and it was not the experience that I had been seeking. I wanted a sign that was going to say, you can be and will be good at something other than gymnastics. I wanted affirmation, and instead, I got exposed. Two years later, I stuck with gymnastics. Now I was going to finish what I was going to, what I started. I was going to go to Tokyo, and then I was going to go to school. And then the pandemic came. Everything went online, and I had to decide once again whether or not I wanted to continue with the sport and take another gap. And I understand that my predicament pales in comparison to the struggles that many others were facing during the pandemic. But for me, it represented once again a decision that was not really a decision because I knew what I had to do, either. I kept on going down the path, or I failed, or I gave up, or I lost. As an athlete, I learned to approach life like a test, where there was always a right answer, which means consequentially, there was always a wrong answer. And I interpreted external outcomes, like not getting that scholarship, as signs of what the right answer must be. But obviously, life is much more complicated than that. Fear of failure in sports is easy to understand, it's a bad competition, a bad routine, a bad season. But fear of failure in life is more abstract. It's a fear of regret, of making the wrong decision, of going down the wrong path. <clears throat> Oscar Wilde said that every little action of the common day makes or unmakes character. I do think that I've been taking that a little too seriously. But that is to say that choice is hard. And it's hard knowing what one should do when one comes about to this time of life. And I think that fundamentally, why it's so hard for me to choose anything is because I'm still scared of losing. But what defines winning and losing in life? My go-to party line is that I'm experiencing my quarter-life crisis and my midlife crisis at the same time because I'm both in my 20s and yet fully retired. <laughs> the thing is that, I am so grateful to have experienced an entire career so young. 
to have had that been my guiding purpose in life. But it also meant that I relied on that career for my entire sense of self-worth for so long. Now, when I was seven years old, my mom actually asked me to pick between gymnastics and swimming because I had been getting pretty good at swimming, but school was starting soon and I simply needed to make a decision. And I remember very clearly that moment, taking my time, weighing both my options thoughtfully, and then, here's the kicker, I came to a decision all by myself. <laughs> and so now I think that if I was able to make a decision for myself at seven, I can do so again at 23. Because life now isn't about winning, it's about living. Thank you.